and I am excited to present to you today uh, this webinar about how to prepare for a career in computer science and or and or game development. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to start thinking about possible classes that you can take in school for the upcoming school year and activities that you can do in school or on your own that can prepare you uh, for careers in this field. All right. So a little bit about me. I am the owner of a game development company called Cloudy Heaven Games. So I do have background in game development. And also, I have a lot of educational and professional experience in just general computer science and software development. So I can speak to you a little bit today about some of the overlaps uh, between the different fields and, and how you can uh, take best advantage of that. I also am a lifelong gamer, so I'm sure uh, some of you who might be listening to this uh, might want to get into games because you feel the same way, so we'll talk about some of the things that you can do to prepare for that. And I, just for the record, I did uh, go to a, a technical school called MIT, uh, specifically to study computer science, so I also have uh, some insight into uh, what some of the class uh, requirements are there and what best helps you to prepare uh, for something like that. So let's go ahead and get started now that I've uh, told you a little bit about my background and my relevance to this topic. So I want to start off with a brief disclaimer here. So we said computer science and game development. They are not necessarily the same thing. All right. So We'll see today that there's lots of career paths in game development that don't necessarily require you, require you to have a computer science background or programming skills. And then even in software development or, uh, or working with technology, those jobs don't always require you to have a computer science degree or programming skills as well. So for example, um, Software testing, you can be a software tester and not have a lick of programming skills. You know, you could be someone who does more on the graphic design side of things. So making websites or games look nice with art and, and uh, nice menu buttons and interfaces and all of that. Uh, you can be a technical writer, someone who maybe writes uh, design documents or, or manuals for, for users, things like that. Uh, you don't have to be a programmer or computer scientist to do that. Uh, if you're focusing more on the user experience, so making sure that your website or software or game uh, pre pre uh, presents a good intuitive and easy experience for your, your uh, user or player, uh, that's also another non-computer science uh, requiring role and also something like project management where you're going to be uh, working together managing a lot of people to keep the software project on track okay but the com there's a, a a strong common thread through many roles in these fields of computer science so that's why uh, we're going to be uh, spending a lot of time talking specifically about computer science today all right great so now that we've gotten that out of the way one of the things that I just want to quickly touch on um, is some of the career paths that you can take in computer science and game development. Because I, I know with a lot of, of, of people, they hear computer science, but it's not always clear what exactly that entails. Or they just think software development or programming, but it's a lot more than that. So I just want to give you an overview of some of the, the directions that you can go in so you can start planning accordingly. So uh, you've pro the first two you've probably heard a lot um, and uh, somewhat interchangeably. So the first uh, career is software engineer and then programmer. So uh, for looking at these two, I want you to think about the analogy of a house. OK, so before you build a house, you have to have an architect who puts together a blueprint of um, what the house needs to look like, uh, the, the specifications to make sure that the whole thing doesn't just crumble into the ground or something like that. Um, and also maybe even taking into consideration, uh, you know, government or, or zoning requirements for um, what sort of uh, things need to be included in the house. All right. So uh, maybe 
uh, they, they need to be energy efficient or something like that, you know. So um, the architect who's making the blueprints is sort of like the software engineer who is planning and, and designing the programs, programs and software that they run. So, you know, before you even create any software, you need to sit down and plan and figure out what problem you're trying to solve and how to solve it. So that's what a software engineer does. Um, now, programming is really writing the code or the computer instructions that actually run the programs and software according to the plans that have been developed by the software engineers. So, you know, in the, going back to our house analogy, the programmer might be um, the, the person who actually builds the house, you know, like the carpenter or the or the person who does the masonry or plumbing or whatever. Um, software engineer can also and often is a programmer as well. But I, I wanted to clear up that distinction. Okay, now web developer and designer, I think that's a little more intuitive about what that actually means. So you will be in this role creating interactive websites. Again, you're not just limited to writing code, um, although that is an important part of it, but you also need to make sure that the site is engaging and easy to use, right? And it has the proper content. Um, you know, if you're concerned about getting a good, having your page show up high in Google search results, you know, then you might include things like search engine optimization as part of the, as this part of this rule. Okay, um, so that that's another popular role or path that you might see out there. Okay, cybersecurity. This is a big field these days, protecting computer systems from attacks and threats. And I'm, I'm sure we've all heard um, in the news about how that can be problematic and, and why we need people to get into cybersecurity. So that's another uh, important field. Data scientist or analyst. So these are the people who process, uh, process and analyze data to find patterns and in information which can be used to solve problems. So in a, a one common example, um, is the, the the whole idea about tracking or, or gathering information about customers, you know? So you go to a site like Google and you use the search engine and you use their various um, services like YouTube and they collect data about the users, uh, which then advertisers can use that data to solve the problem of finding uh, the appropriate um, customers or um, serving uh, the appropriate products and advertisements to the appropriate audience. Okay. And then, uh, you know, there can be other examples, um, you know, like civil engineering, well, for example, or, or planning a city. Let's say that you need to figure out, well, where is the most traffic and, you know, what parts of the city have the most traffic and what times of day. So if you have some sort of a, um, a, a database or a set of, of information um, that you can use to figure that stuff out. You can write programs to, to help you pinpoint, okay, well, where do we need to have more traffic lights? Or do we need to um, redesign some of the street layouts or things like that? So um, data scientists really are useful in a lot of different fields, okay? And you can even think of like medical fields or um, analyzing data to find the best treatment, things like that, okay? Hardware developer or engineer. So these are people who create the physical components of computers and devices. So, you know, like the, the cir circuits and motherboards that you have in your computer, the peripheral devices like the, the battery, um, uh, you know, maybe if you have some gaming devices like the, the um, what is it, not the 3D, but the artificial intelligence um, or, or virtual reality um, plugins that you can have. Those are those involved a lot of physical components rather than software, right? So that's another field that is in part of that computer science umbrella. Artificial intelligence, which is basically, uh, you know, teaching computers how to smartly solve problems on their own. That could be anything from artificial intelligence in games, you know, making opponents or your your um, allies in, in a game more intelligent, or um, you know. Again, we've seen applications in other fields as well, such as being able to um, diagnose diseases and things like that, okay? And then tester and quality assurance. So someone who's making sure that the software works is expected by finding and reporting bugs and problems. So, you know, very important to have testers before you roll out your software or game or other application uh, to the public, okay? 
so these are some career paths um, from a computer science degree or perspective. Now, uh, focusing more on game development career paths. So game development is uh, a subset in many cases of computer science, as we sort of touched on before, because someone has to program the games, right? Um, some of the fields that you can get it, or some of the, the roles that you can get in, in the game development field include the game designer, who is more on the side of developing the ideas and concepts and overall experience for a game. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to include coding at that point. Um, the, the programmer, which is basically the same thing as we talked about before. The artist, creating visual art assets for the game. And I, I do want to specify that just because I didn't put artist under the computer science side of things, you do need artists sometimes for some software that you might be creating. Okay. Uh, so, um, you know, we, again, we see that non computer science sort of, of application or, or role in, um, in these fields. Musician and sound artist creating music and sound effects for your game. Um, you know, you can have voice actors, you can have writers who write the story and, and, script and dialogue and other things that are needed for games. Again, we also see playability and quality assurance testers here as well. And project managers, just like we would see in, in other software projects, you have them in games as well. Uh, marketing and promoting, so getting people interested in playing your games. Um, and again, that's not just games, that's also software, you know, so uh, that's a very important role. And then technical writing. So someone who writes the, the technical documentation, you know, documents for like the programmers and um, how, the, how the, the computer systems are supposed to work and whatnot, okay? So these are some, I, I wanted to give you a taste of some of the, the, the things that you can do with degrees in this field, or, you know, even if you don't have a degree, some of these things you can get, um, you can uh, still get experience in, okay? Um, so one of the things that I do wanna emphasize is that, um, when you're in high school, you might not necessarily be ready to make a firm commitment, particularly if you're in, um, you know, ninth grade or maybe even eighth grade going into high school. You might not necessarily be able to say, okay, well, you know, I definitely want to be a programmer or a data scientist or hardware developer or whatever the case may be. But that's okay. Um, it, it's good to start even as early as middle and early high school to start thinking about possible interests. So the earlier in your school career that you do this, the better, because you'll get a chance to participate in activities and classes to get some experience in different areas. All right. And the other thing is that um, computer science touches many other fields. So think creatively. So, um, you know, you might be interested in, in medicine and, you know, you, the computer science might not come to, to mind immediately, but think about biomedical engineering and all of like the, the smart devices and wearable things like Fitbits and, you know, heart monitors that we have that rely on code or even like that hardware engineering that we talked about. So, you know, that's a, a field where maybe if you, if you like medicine or chemistry or things like that and biology and computer science, maybe you can mix them together. Um, aviation and avionics. If you've ever flown in a plane before, you probably would be comforted to know that the, the pilots have a lot of help. You know, they have computer systems that are monitoring the, the flights and the, the airplanes themselves and, you know, the flight plan, making sure that you're staying on course, communicating with the, the um, air traffic control. So a lot of that is computer-based software engineering that helps to keep us safe, right? So that's another field. And even, it doesn't even have to be airplanes. Think about all the, the cars out there that day, these days that have computer and software components. I mean, most of the cars now, or well, at least a lot of the cars now, you can connect to the internet. So, you know, that's another kind of computer science application that you can see there. We already talked a little bit about civil engineering. Um, so for example, when we were talking about like city planning, um, you know, that, that's really important. Um, and maybe even physical sciences like uh, chemistry or, or physics or biology. So, you know, you could imagine um, using computer software programs to analyze some data from some of these, some of the tests and experiments in these fields and things like that. Okay. 
So, um, like I said, there's different different um, paths that are available, and I think usually by about 11, going into 11th grade, definitely by senior year, it is better if you do have some idea about what direction that you want to take because that's when you really start um, applying to, to colleges and and um, you want to start showing that you are um, that you have a demonstrated interest in some field. Okay, um, but you know it's you're you're not always going to know exactly what you want to do um, when you're still in school. Okay. Um, so let me just take a quick pause here. I'm just going to check in the chat and see if we have any questions or issues or anything like that. Yes, we do have um, a lot of, of um, options that are available. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions or anything like that. So let's go ahead and, and uh, resume here. Okay. Um, so now having talked about some of the options that are out here, let's actually get into how you're going to choose your, your classes um, in this upcoming school year and just planning out your, your, uh, the remainder of your school career um, in the long term. So when we're looking at, at, at the classes that you're choosing, you've got two main goals, all right? So the first goal is uh, for many people is to get into a good school. So uh, you want to, from this point of view, you want to make sure that you're taking plenty of challenging classes whenever possible. So, um, you know, you are, you, you don't want to necessarily take the easy route out. You know, you don't want to take classes that are just easy A's. At the same time, you do want to keep a manageable course load. So, you know, there is a bit of a balance that you have to strike there. And I think that if you are, um, you, you know, if, you, if you're looking at this earlier in your school career, like maybe middle school and early high school years, then you can start getting an idea about um, how um, how you're able to manage your time and your your workload and, you know, maybe even start taking um, a, a couple of advanced classes then to start getting yourself accustomed to some of that heavier material. All right. But the one thing I do want to point out is don't slack off in your senior year. You know, sometimes you might uh, see students who, oh, I've already been accepted into college, so I can just do nothing for the rest of my senior year. So there, you know, there there could be cases where the college admissions officers look back and say, oh, OK, well, you know, we thought that you were, you, you know, based on what you had been doing up until you got admitted, we thought that you were more of a hardworking student for this. So, you know, maybe we're not we're going to reconsider that. Um, and even if it's not necessarily that they don't that they um, revoke the admissions offer, you might lose out on opportunities such as scholarships or being able to be in certain programs um, in, in, in the, the college. So, you know, be careful about slacking off in senior year, right? Um, the other thing that you want to make sure about is knowing the pre prerequisites for advanced classes, okay? So you, if you want to take, an, you know that in senior year, you want to take an advanced calculus class but what do you have to do in order to get there? You need to uh, first you need to take a pre-calculus class before you can get into the advanced calculus and then uh, maybe a regular calculus class even. So it might be pre-calc calculus and then advanced calculus. And then maybe even before that, you might have to take algebra. All right. And then before that, you have to take pre-algebra. OK, uh, physics is another example. So a lot of times with physics, you have to take a calculus class first. All right. So um, this is why we say take a long term view and plan ahead so that you know um, what the prerequisites are so that you don't you don't find yourself still find yourself stuck in senior year uh, wanting to take a particular class. But you can't because you don't have time to go back and take the prerequisites. OK, so some those are some considerations for getting into a good school. Now, um, the other thing that we're going to be um, thinking about is using classes to explore your interests. So we said that you that um, you might not necessarily know the, the specific career path that you could take. Now, taking different classes is an opportunity to, to figure out what you're interested in. 
So take advantage of electives. So when you have, when you finished up all the required classes, see what some of the optional classes are and, you know, explore a little bit. All right. When you're taking the general course requirements, make sure that you're paying attention and thinking about how they might apply to a career that you might like. So, you know, maybe you're not really interested in art, but you have to take an art class as part of your general course requirements. Don't necessarily blow it off, because what if maybe you, you are a gamer and you might not necessarily be thinking, well, maybe I like I would like to do art for games, you know? So you might have missed an opportunity there to think about how you can connect a, a required class to something that you might like, or that might be a prerequisite to allow you to do something that you do like, okay? Now, I do want to speak about AP classes or um, you know, advanced placement courses. So these are courses that are offered by the College Board here in the United States. So um, the College Board is, is actually the name of, of the organization um, that administers these things. And these are really good to take um, for your um, classes. So the way they work is you, you take the classes. Usually they're um, a year length, and I think there might be some semester length classes. And then at the end of the year, in addition to um, whatever exam uh, your your school offers, the College Board will, will offer an AP exam in that course. And you get a score. Um, it's one, which is the lowest score, and a five, which is the highest score. Okay. And um, sometimes you can get college credit for really high score. So if you get like a four or five in computer science or physics, you might be able to place out of some um, required classes when you go to college. Okay. Um, check the, the specific college that you're interested in and the specific course, um, but they're really good for that. And also they really show that you are, um, you, you know, that, that you are a, a diligent student. Okay, so some of the recommended classes for computer science and or game development, definitely AP computer science. And this comes in two flavors. All right. So computer science A is the older course. It's been around for a lot longer and it's more intensely fo uh, po focused on programming. Um, right now, it's focused on a, a programming language called Java. Uh, that might or might not change in the future, but um, you know that if if you are someone who is definitely a technical person, you'll want to do computer science A. Um, again, check with your school to make sure that you need to make sure whether or not you need to do a an introductory program programming course first before you get into AP. Mm -hmm. um, and it might not be bad to also take an intro programming class before AP just to to get an idea of. Um, what programming is, and if it's something that you do want to do, all right? Um, if you're not sure about the programming part of things, there's some schools also offer a, uh, AP Computer Science Principles, which is a newer course, and it's more of a general overview of how computer science concepts appear in daily life. You know, so you'll learn things about, like, what a, a software program is, how does the Internet work, um, you know, what what are some ethical and privacy and security concerns with uh, different types of software and networks, all right? And it's less tech savvy, but uh, you know, if, if you're someone who, who might feel a little bit intimidated by the programming involved in computer science A, or you're, you know, you're not really sure which way to go, you can take computer science principles. And I do, uh, currently, um, they also have, uh, as part of the requirement, a, a little mini programming project that you can do in a language of your choice um, you know, but that might, like I, like I said, that might or might not change. So it does also give you a little bit of taste of, of programming as well. All right. AP uh, physics is another big one. Some colleges require physics as part of an AP, uh, as part of a computer science degree, particularly if you're interested in doing hardware, um, because one part of physics is electrical engineering or, or electricity and magnetism and things like that. So, um, that's going to be really good if you wanted to do like the more of the hardware and electrical engineering side of, of computer science where you're building circuits and motherboards and devices and things like that. Again, check the prerequisites because you might have to take math classes before. All right. And speaking of math, um, AP calculus, there's A, B and B, C calculus, uh, B, C calculus, covers a little bit more material than AB, right? But AB is still useful. 
AP statistics. So if you're, this is particularly good if you're interested in data science, but it also has uh, useful applications to many fields as well, right? So, um, you know, those are the two major math um, AP classes, the calculus and the statistics, all right? Uh, now, some of the other uh, AP courses that, that you can, I guess, mix and match from, you know, these are the ones that I definitely recommend, but these are some that you can, you can also add at your discretion. So uh, AP English Language and Composition might be a little bit surprising to see on this list, but the reason is that there's lots of people who are technical geniuses. You know, they're great programmers, great with, with science stuff, but they don't communicate or write well. So, you know, this is an opportunity to stand out a little bit and prepare yourself because I know at least in some schools, at least at MIT, they did have a, uh, and they do, I think, have still have a requirement where um, students have to take writing classes or, and um, to be able to, to be good communicators. Um, so, you know, this is a good way for you to, to prepare early and stand out. Um, also, just having worked in software engineering, uh, there's always a need for people who are good at writing like software design documents and things like that. So um, it, it, it's also good in a professional sense as well. All right. Um, also will be good um, writing skills for your college applications. So that's another obvious appli uh, application or use. All right. Then also look at the other AP science courses. Like we said, some schools will let you get credit um, for some of the, the general education if you do well. So maybe you can get chemistry or biology or whatever out of the way. All right. And also other humanities courses, you know, they've got art, they've got 2D and 3D art, um, uh, history, um, literature, things like that. It's, they're good for building general uh, thinking skills, critical thinking, um, you know, They'll do do more with that writing, for instance, and they're all, they can also be good background and inspirational material of if you're interested in games uh, for making good game stories and, and world building and things like that. OK. Now, I do, um, you know, there, there is a tool that I want to share with you that allows you to see the mapping between AP courses and careers. So I'm going to um, give you the link to these slides. Um, in the in the chat and also if you've you've signed up for this on Eventbrite um, I'll send it to your email so you'll have all of these links but um, I'm gonna just show this to you really quickly it's a really useful tool um, where uh, you can if you wanna if you're interested in a particular um, career for instance or, or major um, you can click on, on on what you're interested in and then you can choose uh, you know the area and uh, so, okay, so if you've majored in, uh, if you want to major in, for instance, uh, since we're talking about computer science, let's do computer science, but, you know, they also have other fields that you can look at. And then um, you, you see the results, and it'll tell you a little bit about what the major requires, you know, some of the skills and the description, um, and some recommended AP courses, all right? And if you, if you expand, um, it, it tells you how those AP courses are useful. You know, and it gives you the skills like investigating materials um, and, and things like that. Uh, so, you know, it'll, for instance, just tells you how AP art can relate to computer science, which you might not have thought of. All right. Um, you know, if we go back, um, you can also, um, if you're, if you, you are taking AP courses right now, you can also see a mapping of how the particular AP course uh, maps to some career opportunities, all right? Um, it tells you the skills that you'll learn in that AP course, um, you know, some of the career, the, some of the majors that it can help you with, and um, beyond the, the college majors, some of the careers that, that it can be helpful with. So you can see how statistics applies to agricultural and, and food scientists, or even um, sales, advertising sales agents, okay? Um, so, uh, this is a, a useful tool that you might want to, to take a look at, all right? Um, and while I'm out here, uh, yes. Um, so, yes, um, there are, you know, we, we did talk about how literature and history classes can help with, with games. Okay, so um, let's go back, get right back into it here. And actually, uh, while while we're here, um, I can give you the link um, 
to these slides, um, you know, if, if you want to, to follow along and uh, let's see, and look at some of these links as well, since we are uh, getting to a point where there are a lot of links here. Okay. So now let's get right back into this here. Okay, so um, there's also another link here um, that, that tells more about AP classes in general, so it's a little article um, that you can take a look at. Um, there's also a, a list here of all the computer science, uh, or not computer science, all of the AP classes that are offered. Um, and, you know, and this goes to the College Board site. And um, at the bottom here, there's um, another article that goes into a little more detail about the math classes that we talked about, the two flavors of calculus and um, statistics, and um, it does a little bit of, of comparison between them and help guide you in, in making a choice. All right. Now, one of the things I do want to, to, to make clear, I am very much aware that there are some schools and, or school systems that do not offer AP AP classes at all, or they might not offer the class that you want. And unfortunately, there are a lot of, of schools that don't offer AP computer science. So, you know, you might feel like, okay, well, I'm stuck now because what am I going to do, right? So two suggestions that I'm going to make here, um, and actually um, three, which I'm going to, to um, show the uh, last option in a future slide. Uh, but the first two, um, the first one, first of all, is to take the most challenging classes that are offered. Okay, so maybe if they don't have AP computer science, maybe there's still some sort of an honors class or like um, international baccalaureate or something like that. Um, so when, you, when you're looking at colleges, they're gonna be looking uh, for you to make the, the best use of what resources you have available. Okay, so they know too that some schools don't have certain things available to them. But if you are um, making the best re of, of what you do have and taking the most advanced classes that are available to you, then that's going to look, um, that's still going to look pretty good. And that shows that you have initiative and, and commitment and that you're willing to, to stretch yourself. Okay. So don't, don't let that be a barrier to you. Okay. Now, another option is finding another school that offers the AP exam that you want and then register for the exam. Uh, but in this case, you'll have to self-study, okay? So you can take the exam um, at the school, uh, at the, the alternative school, and then study on your own. And there is more, there's a link here that has more about how you can do that. Uh, now, self-studying is definitely um, a major uh, undertaking because you have to, you know, you have to stay on, on, on course. You don't have necessarily have a teacher who's keeping you on track. Um, so, you know, you, you it, it is... Um, definitely a, a challenge, but I think it's a worthwhile uh, challenge. And this is also a, applicable if maybe you're homeschooled, okay? So those are some options that you have there, all right? And, and the, the third option that I was, was mentioning is that you can also take some other options, uh, other uh, uh, classes that are offered um, online. You know, we I know that with um, the pandemic, you probably aren't, aren't really going to see as many in-person classes offered like um, local community college or local library classes. But if you have an online connection, an internet connection, you always have some of these online classes that are offered. Okay, so this can might maybe fill in some of the some of the gaps. edX is a really, really good popular um, platform to help you find classes and in a variety of skills, not just computer science. And there's also a really popular computer science class um, that is on the platform. It's actually Harvard's introduction to computer science um, called CS50X. Okay, so that's a good one that you can take if you need to to fill in some of the gaps that um, aren't offered at your school. Okay, uh, Code Academy. That's another one that that um, I've even used. You know, it's a fun way to learn new programming skills or new technical skills, and a lot of my students have used it as well. OK, and um, again, there's free and paid options for these. And, um, you know, there's plenty of other um, online resources. If you need more, um, you can I'll, I'll give you my contact um, information and and we can help you get what you need there. All right. 
Now, um, something else that I want to give you some resources for, I'm not going to go too much into detail about the specifics here, but what some of the career paths we mentioned were, were the, the user experience or user interface, which is making sure that for your game or software or, or website or app or whatever the case may be, the user needs to be able to to easily navigate it. You know, it needs to be intuitive. Um, they need to be able to find what they need. Um, quickly, and um, it's also good if it's easy on the eyes, right? Um, so um, here are some links that go into more detail about um, improving your user interface um, and user interface, I mean, user experience um, skills. I, I noticed that in, in many cases, uh, just a, a straight up computer science career uh, uh, course path doesn't necessarily take this into consideration, but I think it's really important. I know like as a programmer, more technical side, um, you know, this is something that I could probably um, also um, beef up uh, my skills with so that, you know, if I was offering advice on this to anyone else, these are, are some starting uh, tips that I would offer. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me just take a quick pause here, make sure that um, everyone has a chance to to ask questions um, or get that link. Okay, um, looks like we're still good here. All right, um, so uh, now we've talked a lot about classes. Now let's talk about activities that you can do, all right? Extracurricular things that you can do. So the first, uh, so how do you find activities? So, so my first suggestion is gonna be to start with your school or you know, like local library or, or community for for activities that you can participate in. So clubs, competitions, um, and career events, things like that. So some some key key terms or, or key things to look for might be a computer science club. Um, maybe you're more into um, you know like the the hardware side of things. Maybe you like robots. So robotics clubs and robotics comp competitions. Um, might be good to look for, even robotics classes. There's lots of them out there. Game development clubs. Those are, are something else that you might want to look for. All right. Uh, look for science fairs and also maybe any classes or, you know, boot camps or, or summer camps or anything like that. Um, start in your, your local community uh, to see what's available to you. All right. Um, and, and this, I, I think this applies at any particular um education level, whether you're in a grade school or whether you're in college or, you know, if you're on this call and, and maybe you are um, looking to um, get into a different career that is more technically based, you know, think about some of the, uh, you know, you can still participate in activities and, and do competitions and things like that um, as well at any level. All right. If you don't have anything available to you locally, consider starting your own clubs and activities. So um, this can demonstrate initiative, interest, commitment, and leadership. So, you know, that's really good on a college application, um, or maybe um, if, if you're, you're an adult who's looking to change careers, or if you're a student who's looking to get like a, an internship or part-time job, um, this also gives you an opportunity to show um, that you are involved and, and committed um, in this particular career path, okay? Now, um, what follows, I'm going to give you, uh, there's more links here um, to some organized activities that are um, more international or national, uh, but are uh, more broad ranging than just your local community. Okay. So coding competitions. So these are um, contests where you're given a limited amount of time and a set of problems, and you have to... Um, write code that solves the problems, okay? And um, the, one of the, the first ones that, that I know about is the USA Computing Olympiad. I think it's Computing Olympiad. It might be Coding Olympiad, but um, this is a, a major one. And, and despite the fact that it says USA, um, it's actually, you can also compete, in, compete internationally. I have a student right now who is in Asia who I'm actually preparing him uh, for this competition. So, um, you know, take a look at, at that if you want to get started. And that um, 
that competition also uh, has some good links in general about competitive coding and, and how to prepare and whatnot and sample problems and things like that. So that's a good way to get your, uh, to sort of uh, dip your toes into, um, in, into some, you know, kind of heavy hitting uh, coding problems, all right? Then there's some other ones, International Collegiate Programming Contest, um, Microsoft has the Imagine Cup, which I think, uh, I don't necessarily know that it's like this, the same as like a, a, a set of, of problems. Um, I think that might be more of create an app um, that solves um, a particular issue. Um, but, you know, that might also be fun to look into. Um, the American Computer Science League is also an international competition, despite the name. Um, and the Congressional App Challenge, um, that's more United States, um, geared toward the United States. But, uh, you know, it's just a couple that you can look at, all right? Again, we've got some robotics competitions. So if you're interested in that, um, you can take a look. Um, if you're interested more in game development, um, you know, here's a couple of competitions that you might want to get involved in. Um, there's uh, STEM Fuse, Games for, for Change, um, Inter Independent Games Festival, which is not just for students, um, but um, it's also a, one of the, the major competitions that's out there. Um, game Jams, that's also like a, a time-restricted game competition that you can do. So if you want to learn more about how to do that, here's a link about how to get started, what they are, and um, you know, where to find them and whatnot. And you can also make your own games too. That's a perfectly valid activity. So if you're interested in that, um, I have a link here to a Google document that's um, a work in progress. You know, I'm always updating it, which goes into pretty, pretty uh, good detail about how you can get started on uh, making your first game. Okay. So you might want to take a look at that there. All right. Um, then of course, you know, we're always looking for internships, scholarships, camps, things like that. So, you know, here's more um, activities that you could take a look at. Um, uh, just, just you know, take a look at, at some of these and, and see what's out there. One thing that I will ad advise is that for some of these activities, um, they might not fit in your, your timeline. So if you're a senior, for instance, or, or um, you know, maybe uh, you're already heading off to college or, or something like that, um, you know, you might not have time to participate in some of these programs because maybe the, the opening period is next spring, you know. So obviously um, that's probably going to, to um, not fit into your, your plans if you're about to go to college, right? Uh, so again, keep a, start now and, and look at the timelines for these things so you can start planning ahead, all right? And even if you miss the deadline for this year, um, if it's something that you're really interested in, uh, bookmark it so you can be ready for when they they open it for the next year, okay? And again, think about prerequisites. Like if you need to get like a letter of recommendation or you have to submit a resume or something like that, then you want to be prepared, all right? So again, a couple more activities that you can look at. Um, and then here, um, some other links. So there's a, you know, this first one is just a list of some competitions. And then this second one here, I really like, uh, because it allows you to, uh, it allows you, uh, to, um, search for competitions based on category. So, you know, we're talking about computer science. So, you know, you can, uh, narrow down by coding and computer science, and, um, you know, you can get, get some results there about activities. Um, you know, they, they, they usually mention the game, the grade level, and um, they also mention uh, the, the scope of it. So uh, like this one, for instance, is international. So, uh, you know, you need to make sure of um, whether or not it applies to, to your local area. All right. Um, and it also has dates um, and, and um website links and whatnot, and if there's entry fees or anything like that, okay? Uh, so, so take a look at that. Something else you might want to do, um, you know, you can also put a, a keyword search here. So if you're an international student, um, you can put international so that you don't get things that are geared towards um, students based in the U.S., because unfortunately that is a lot of these competitions and programs are um, geared to, towards the United States, okay? 
Um, if, if you're international, make sure that you're um, looking at your own uh, search engines and things like that to see what's in your area, okay? So, um, so you've got some, some activities here that you can work on. Um, now we'll talk about building a portfolio. So this is good for college applications or job applications. It's always good to have um, to be able to show off a project that you've worked on and and uh, used your skills. OK, now any project that you work on, make sure that you're documenting and keeping good records of your dev development process. You know, so like design sketches, um, written descriptions of the documents, test plans, um, pictures of this of the, the product or, or screenshots. Um, actual code that people can look at, and even like what you learned, you know, lessons learned and things like that. If you're not sure how to do that, um, how to how to start a portfolio, one suggestion I have is um, contributing to open source projects. Open source software um, or projects um, allow the users to contribute and see and edit the code or source material. So if you think about software, for instance, um, if you are using something like Microsoft Word and you and you run into an error in the program or it doesn't work the way you want it to, you're pretty much out of luck, right? You can send Microsoft a, a bug report or, or a request for a feature, but you can't go in and change the code, right? Because it's closed source. You don't have access to the code. Open source is where users also have access to the code. So if there's a bug, they can go in and fix it and maybe submit an update to the to the project or um, you know they can um, add their own features or whatnot. So if you're interested in getting started with that, there's a couple of links about um, what more about what open source is and how to get started, and also how to find some uh, projects that are, are are open to beginners who might not uh, feel up to the task of um, you know doing solving really complicated um, problems. Okay, um, and then um, the you know, you'll see that you can also contribute things other than code to open source, like um, you can make tutorials or, or documentation or, you know, you can help out in the community or you can contribute art or things like that. OK. Uh, maker portfolios. Um, these are um, an online collection of artifacts um, and descriptions of a project that you've worked on, and uh, they are very useful uh, to college applications. A lot of schools allow you to submit a maker portfolio now. They can be used for art projects, creative projects, and of course, tech projects. So if you're interested in that, here's a couple of links about um, what maker portfolios are, um, how to use them, how to get started, and all sorts of good stuff. All right. Now, if you still want ideas about how to work on your own coding projects, um, I have a link here for some coding tutorials. Um, you know, Java is a big one. And in fact, I have students who have finished AP computer science, but they've never built like a, a Java project on their own. They've just done uh, what the class, the, the class project. So uh, there are some ideas and tutorials about some projects that you can you can uh, work on. Um, if you're interested in JavaScript and, and online games that work in the browser, I actually have a course here, a couple of courses um, at my teachable site. Um, that you can look at, that you can sign up for. Um, and, um, you know, there's also another game engine uh, for browser-based games called Phaser um, that you can look into as well. And, you know, Python, that's another programming language. And then Scratch, which is a, which is a very good beginner-friendly um, game development platform uh, that was developed by MIT. So, you know, you've got some options there, all right? Um, last point I want to talk about is certifications. So um, a lot of tech companies will offer exams and certifications of certain technologies. So, you know, you, you study, you pass an exam and do a project and you get certified in that technology. All right. And this is it's often used for for people who are already in the workforce to get to get extra job skills and show that they know how to do something. But you can also put them on a college application or a student resume um, or, you know, Again, like if you want to change careers and, and show that you are good in a certain skill. So um, you might also look into certification as a student. Now, fair warning, they can be costly because a lot of times the exam or like the preparation courses might cost a couple hundred dollars. They can take a lot of time uh, to prepare for and the technology might change. You know, so a certification that you get now might not be. Um, really useful like 10 or 15 years from now or even you know just just you know tech changes so just keep that in mind 
And some schools do award credit for certifications, uh, but be careful um, because a lot don't necessarily do that. So here's a list of, of schools that do and um, more about um, how specifically from um, Microsoft and their certifications about how you can um, use that for college credit, okay? And then here I just have a bunch of, of listing of, of some major tech certifications, you know, Microsoft, Oracle, um, Amazon, uh, and all that. They have uh, certifications in programming, um, uh, cloud technology, Amazon Web Services, um, IT security, IT help desk, uh, all sorts of things like that. All right, so you might want to just browse around and see what's out there, okay? All right, so um, that's all that I have. Uh, if you want more info about some of this, I, again, here's this, this game dev document that I have that you can look at about getting started in game development. Um, here's one particular introductory game programming class uh, that, that I have available. Um, you can also sign up for my um, newsletter uh, for updates about my projects that I'm working on, both game related and um, educational opportunities like this. You can email me. Um, you can see my projects on, um, you know, like the, my itch.io page. Itch.io is a good site for independent game developers. And um, there's my Twitter. All right. So I'm going to open this up uh, to questions. We still have a couple of minutes. So I will um, let you ask any questions that you might have. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I, I put it in, uh, I'll, I'll put this in discussion mode. So um, you should be able to, to actually speak um, if, you, if you have any questions or you would like to um, uh, get more, uh, you, can, you can put chat, uh, put a message in chat as well. Okay, and there's also a couple of other links that I want to leave you with. Um, if you're more specifically interested in game development, um, here's some links to a previous webinar that I did. So um, this was earlier this year. So there's slides, and there's also like the, the uh, replay on YouTube. All right. Any uh, final thoughts or any wrap up or? Let's check the chat really quickly. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, what did I do to get into MIT? So, I one of the things that I, I mentioned was that um, you know taking the taking the most challenging courses that you can. I definitely did that. I took lots of, of AP classes. I took um, AP Calculus. I took AP Computer Science. <laughs> AP Computer Science principles was not offered um, when I was back, way back when I was uh, looking to get into college, but I did take the AP Computer Science A, um, which was taught in, in C++ back then rather than Java, so you know the languages do change. Um, I took AP Physics. And I also, uh, let's see, I think that those, I think those were all of the, the AP technology classes that I took. Um, I also took a digital robotics class. I took AP history, uh, AP US history. I'm pretty sure I took AP English, uh, one of the AP English classes, maybe a AP literature or something like that. So I did take a lot of humanities classes. Um, I knew that I was interested in games, so I also did creative writing classes. Um, you know, to, to help with my, my story writing and whatnot. Um, the other thing was that, um, you know, I do, um, I, I didn't slack off in senior year. Um, I, I took, I was still doing a full course load. And, um, you know, I, I think maybe I had like one free period or one study hall to keep things manageable because I also um, did other activities. Um, so that's, that's how I got in there, taking the most advanced classes that I could um, focusing on tech and also, um, you know, just working my hardest here. Um, I do have some games out there. Um, if you want to learn uh, more about that, you can look at that itch.io page um, that I, I linked you to. Um, and uh, I will also give you uh, my Cloudy Heaven Games site. 
um, where you can see more about what I'm, I'm working on. Um, so it's just cloudyheavengames.com. And uh, here's a, and, and here, let me also give you a link to a specific, to a game that's out there in development right now that you can play. Um, it's called, it's a puzzle game, a casual puzzle game called Brain Bouncer. And um, it's, uh, you can play it on Android and on um, PC, like on Windows. Uh, so let me give you uh, the link uh, for that as well. And that is going in chat right now. Okay. Um, one of the best things that I've learned uh, from from this, uh, I guess, the game development career and, and the computer science and, and doing all of that, um, I think problem solving is definitely one of the big things uh, because you will run into a lot of problems. You have to have a lot of patience. Um, and... You, you you do have to think outside of the box sometimes. So um, you that's that's one of the the major skills that I think. Um, also, being particularly with with the game development uh, business and, and making games, um, you know, you have to be able to to learn from um, failure and stuff like that. Because if you if you are, are making uh, particularly with games. Because games are not really as critical as other software. So, you know, people need, need to have things like Microsoft Word um, or email in order to conduct business, right? Or they need to have software in airplanes uh, for safety reasons, right? But you don't, it's not, in most cases, uh, I can't think of any um, uh, cases where this isn't true, but you have to have, uh, you, you don't have to have a game um, to to do most mission critical things in life, I think. So um, convincing people to buy a game can be a lot riskier, um, particularly since there's so many people out there developing games now. Um, you know, there's classes out there that teach you how to do it and then platforms that allow you to, to put your games out there. So it, there's a lot of rejection that comes with that, you know, because people can move on really quickly uh, to another game. So, uh, you know, you have to be able to to adjust to that and not take things personally, um, you know, and, and just figure out, okay, this didn't work. So what do, what do we need to do differently? And um, some cases you have to do that pretty quickly. Um, so, and that, you know, that, that also might be, um, you know, if you, if you started a, a career, um, or maybe a field that you didn't necessarily like. Like maybe you were, you thought you wanted to be in programming and you, you sat down and took a Java class and you were like, oh gosh, no, no, just no. So, you know, you, have, you might want to figure out a different approach. Um, is that really the field that you want? Um, you know, maybe, maybe you want, you can do um, software development um, with something else, like some of the other paths that we talked about. Maybe you need a different language, you know, a lot of people I, I know, they love languages like Ruby, um, but they, they won't touch Java with a 10-foot pole. Uh, maybe it was the, the wrong approach. So maybe the, the teacher that you had wasn't the best format for you um, or, or the best instructor for you. Or maybe you do, do better with uh, video courses or, you know, maybe like on on um, hands-on labs and activities rather than reading out of a gigantic a textbook, you know, so that's another case where you have to uh, figure out, okay, there's a problem here. What's, what is the problem and what do I do to solve it? Okay. Yeah. So th those are some of the things that I've learned, I think. Um, anything else? Okay. All right. Well, uh, that concludes um, my presentation, um, like I said, you've got the you've, you've got the links uh, to the slides, um, as well as plenty of other resources. Um, and, and if you need uh, any anything else, um, you know, you can email me, and um, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so thank you for uh, spending this part of your Saturday morning um, with me, and please enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. Okay. Bye, everyone.